my name is Rhapsody, welcome back to Slay the Spire. Now, all the characters in the game have completed their A20 and in the past have completed their Heartbreaker Ascensions. So, hmm, what exactly do I want to get done at this point in time? Well, look, the screen already says a little bit here. I'm going to be dipping my toes back into the custom mode, as many of y'all have asked. Uh, and I will be going for the Ironclad A20 and I'm just popping off sealed deck. Uh, craft a deck with 30 random cards. Now, this does mean that we will start quite powerfully. So, A20 is effectively here to try and balance out sealed deck. Um, and then over the course of the next couple of episodes, I imagine I will be trying to adjust it to be a little bit more difficult and then a little bit less difficult, a little bit more difficult until I find a reasonable balance that also modifies the game rules in a significant fashion. All right, so we get to draft here. 10. 10 cards. Alright, well, what do I immediately see when I look here? Well, what I immediately see is that there are so many copies of Wild Strike, and there's an Evolve. Hmm. And Second Wind. Hmm. Now, I've run... I, I've run... Uh, ooh, actually, there's a little bit of light focus on defense here, unless I use flame barriers as part of the defense. Hmm. Perfected strike, twin strike, wild strike, wild strike, perfected strike, wild strike, wild strike, pommel strike, go, 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 go. I mean, that and rage could be interesting, uh, but I suspect the, the build that I played the least with is probably wounds for the ironclad. And there is an evolve here. One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They've probably not taken flame, actually. And flame seems like a really bad way to do that. Um, nine, and then I'd take what? Shrug it off. So, ten cards, two defensive, and then all the rest of them aggressive, and nine of them would be strikes. No, sorry, eight of them would be strikes. So, eight, eight by two is 16, 16, six, 22. So 22 damage on each of these perfected strikes at the very start, and then they gain six on their upgrade. Eh. I could do it. I could. But. I just haven't done a actual wounds deck in forever. It may have been since the How to Beat series that I haven't done that. Fine. This is also another way to balance out the effectiveness of having sealed uh, sealed deck at the very start, right? Try and draft builds that I typically might not. That said, there is... Second Wind is pretty good here, so we do have the defense from that. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. Um, so we do have some defense from Second Wind, but with the amount of draw that we have from Evolve, especially when it's upgraded, Rage with all of these Wild Strikes seems like a really good way to aggress. Um, do we have anything that benefits from being exhausted? Not at all. Uh, there's not that much defense available, so I suspect I also take like Shrug Off Flame Barrier. And then I have, I believe, one more card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I have exactly one more card that I can take. Uh, if I take an Irma, uh, an Irma Mint, if I take an early armament, I can upgrade that. Hmm. So this deck deals most of its damage with Wild Strike, right? Wild Strike benefits a lot. Six damage worth from, uh, from vulnerability. There's one vulnerability source here. Thunderclap. I'll take it. All right, let's have a look. Ooh, there's a four elite path. All right, we'll, we'll try. We'll try. This deck is really aggressive, so I suspect it won't be the most awful thing. Hey, like those little sigils up there now. Uh, we'll evolve then. Flame Barrier, sure. Yeah, this is a pretty big problem. Regret. I do need ways to exhaust those statuses. Otherwise, I like, especially because these will eventually just fill my entire deck. 
Uh, the second wind does help me exhaust them, but not all of them. Maybe just one second wind in the deck is enough. Maybe I don't need True Grit. I'm going to skip it. Because I don't play with second wind much either, right? It's another thing. That I'm just like, oh, I don't know how to use that card. Just going to burn both of those because I basically exclusively want to draw aggression from here on out. Those wild strikes upgrade to be 16 or 18. 17. So right in the middle. I think it used to be 18. Uh, whirlwind does give us pretty good AoE. It's pretty difficult to turn down a whirlwind in the early game. So I don't have the ability not to offer something here, right? Because I do want to desperately not to offer something. I'm going to drop the Shrug It Off, I think. Shrug It Off, I guess, is probably the easiest thing for me to get back. Those have gone into my draw pile, so we'll play the Evolve. Okay, that damage calculation isn't working, so it's seven twice. It's not lethal. That'll do. And there's our lethal. Beautiful. Uh uh. Don't need any of those. I think I will try and stick with the general archetype that I've. Found my way somehow into. Forgot about the fact that Entangle exists. Uh -huh. Ow. None of those. Let's see how we go against elites here at the very least. Still wake him up this turn, actually. Yep, makes our uh, second wind much more effective. And then I'll throw out a weak potion to save myself 10 HP here. 5 this turn, 5 next turn. Or not. Second wind looks like it'll pull to Fanny. Actually, no, it was... Exactly 15 as well. Beautiful. That evolve needs to be upgraded first. It's too important not to. Alright. Paper Frog. Enemies with Vulnerable take 75% more damage on the 50%. Very great pickup there for us. And I'll take the Shrug it off. Get it back in the deck. Um, yeah, upgrades are too important to turn down this early. Let's evolve first. Then I think it's just all of the damage cards. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we've got lethal this turn, because... <laughs> Never mind, we do. Oh, God. This is brutal. Fossilized Helix, for the first time you'd lose HP each combat incredible. I'm not going to take another shrug it off. I like how aggressive the deck is right now. We're going to take a Hedra and for HP as we'll gain energy at the start of each turn. Hmm. That's neat, but not relevant. But the Fossilized Helix does have the ability to possibly maintain it until it becomes relevant. We shall see. Uh, I'll use Shrug It Off here. Damn, I should have done it in a different order. I'll use Shrug It Off here exclusively due to the fact that I'm trying to find Evolve. Got a turn, but at the very least, our draw is no longer going to be compromised. Should basically be able to draw into whatever card I want. That'll do. Meat of the Bone. If your HP is out or below 50% at the end of combat, heal for 12 HP. Always love that. Uh, don't have the time to play Demon Form in this deck. 
When we have excess draw, flex is fine. So after the evolve is out and after we're using all of our wild strikes. But I still don't know. Still don't really know about that. Especially if the final boss was slime boss, I might have considered upgrading a different card there. In particular, I might have considered upgrading the Whirlwind. Would love to play that Evolve, but really can't afford to. I'm gonna go for the Lethal. Ooh. Just take my 50 here. And go for the final Elite on the path. Beautiful. Oh! Thunderclap double wild strike to open as well. What a gift. Cop that eight, draw all my extra cards, get to my lethal. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is working perfectly for us. Mango, pumping up Razor Max HP by 14, as well as Fiendfire. Oh, yes. <gasps> ah. That's such a giant nuke because oftentimes it will be drawn into a hand of. Full cards. One of the things I am worried about here, though, is longevity. How effective is this deck in the long run? That's what I want to know. Fiendfire here, get a lot of garbage cards out of the deck. Alright, so it's Rage. I'm not even gonna Thunderclap here. Just go direct for the damage. Don't need to be shy about it at all. Alright. So the thing is, I do need to make sure that I occasionally play those second wins. Get the rage out of there as well. Just because if I don't, then my whole deck becomes nothing but wounds. And that'll do. Lovely. No. None of that is necessary. Wild. Mmm. I don't want to remove cards from the deck. Extra energy is really important. Extra energy is too important. Can't turn it down. Cannot turn it down. I was thinking about that before we even got to that space. Like, would I take extra energy? Even, like, a bad option for extra energy? I was prepared to take uh, Runic Dome. Alright. Again, let's try and max up our elites. Well, I can't defend this turn anyway, so I may as well not try. Just because the buffer is still going to block the entire thing. Eh, it doesn't burn that many cards, but it does save me a little bit of HP here. We need a way, we need like a uh, bottled tornado so that I can get the evolve out constantly early. Because it is a little bit of a concern for us right now. Upgrade all strikes and defense? What do you mean? But I also don't want to remove a card from this deck. Maybe I want to remove the whirlwind? No, I don't really want to remove the whirlwind. Is the whirlwind upgraded? I do want the world being upgraded. So you just upgrade nothing there because I don't want to remove anything. I can't remove the Ascender's Bane, by the way. Specifically, its effect is can't be removed. I don't want to bash. It's too expensive. Actually, bash is kind of fine. Anger is not. Okay. So we'll purposely fail that one. 
That's right, Guardian. Ooh, evolve out on turn one. They said it can be done. Rightfully, I didn't believe them at the time. God, the rest of the deck is basically just... <gasps> just wounds? Alright, so Fiendfire is 90 damage here. That's why I was so excited to see that Fiendfire. It's going to be great for finishing Elites, especially. Mm, nope. Well, that's needed. Uh, I'll go here so that I can rest after the boss if necessary, but also purchase a Relic before the boss, possibly. Uh, orange Pellets. Whenever you play a Power, Attack, and Skill in the same turn, remove all of your debuffs. We don't have debuffs. We do have powers, attacks, and skills, though. Um, champion Belt. Whenever you apply Vulnerable, also apply one weak. Well, we want to apply Vulnerable, and we would like to apply weak, because the deck doesn't necessarily apply uh, much in the way of its own defense, and weakness can kind of be like a supplementary defense. Sure. And then I'll take a another Thunderclap to benefit from it. Thunderclap makes sense, obviously. Weakens everyone. Um, seems a shame to burn the Fiendfire this early. Especially to deal so little damage over the Wild Strike. I'm gonna do that. At the very least, the Slaver in the front line isn't weakening me, and that's really good. So if I draw the Thunderclap and Whirlwind, we can use the Energy Potion. Probably have a good time here. Seventeen twelve will get me my backliner there at the very least. And Thunderclap weakens both of them, so... This is in a much better position. Great. Well, Wind is definitely the least impactful card in this deck at this point in time, though. I suspect, given the opportunity again, I would remove it. Rage, Thunderclap. Yeah. There we go. Easy fight. And we get a heal. Anchor, Sludge Combo with 10 block. Lovely. Would absolutely adore to. Uh, Palm Strike drawing two cards. That does try and help me get to my Evolve faster. exclusively due to the fact that Evolve is bad if I don't have... Or rather, the Wild Strikes are all really bad if I don't get the Evolve out really early, because otherwise I just fill my deck with Wild Strikes, and then I'm sad. The deck doesn't really do anything at this point. The Energy Potion and then Whirlwind, because that's as effective as that Energy Potion is basically ever going to be for us. I'll hold off of the Fiend Fire for now, but exclusively due to the fact that I can save myself all of the damage this turn. And that'll work. Beautiful. Yeah, I suspect this is either going to be a walkthrough, like uh, just a complete uh, cakewalk. Walk in the cake. Uh, if you don't play any attack strategy on a turn, gain additional energy next turn. All right, does that ever happen? Um, or we are going to run into just one target. Just one. And it will completely prevent us from continuing. It's going to be exciting to see which. Right, at least they're not both attacking this turn again. Beautiful. Ooh, another turn of not attacking, frankly, at all. Beautiful. I'm going to Rage and then Thunderclap, Pommel Strike the Frontliner, looking specifically here to try and find Fiendfire. We don't, but... I'm going to Thunderclap again, just so they have the vulnerability set up for next turn. That is another benefit for having two Thunderclaps in the deck, right? Now I can actually... Oh, Wall Strike. Um, 
yeah, now I can actually have a vulnerability persist until the next turn. Previously was not an option for us. Right, this is the best explosive potion I'll ever find. I suspect I don't want to shrug it off here now. Ooh, three giant wild strikes. Look at all that damage. That's 21 damage to each of the chumps. Oh, wait, it would be 21 damage to the chumps, but the paper frog is interceding on my behalf. By Gremlin Leader and hello to the Thread Needle that started combat gain four plated armor. Love it. HP loss would be another build that I'd really like to try and draft into with the sealed deck modifier. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just play Barry here and then focus on the back line of myself. <laughs> Bye. Well, almost goodbye at least. I could have taken only one damage that turn in order to still go exclusively for the Chosen, but with a Fiendfire left in the deck, why bother? Speed. No, give me those. Well, speed. Speed is really good if I have it on the turn with the second wind and need a singular giant defense. It's possible I need that. Sure, I'll take it. I don't want another wild strike. I already have enough. That's enough for me. I'm going to card remove the whirlwind. It's too ineffectual. Too ineffectual too much of the time. Even here, it's not a card that I really want. Alright, so 14. The incoming damage is... 1627. So this would give me third. I could actually full block with the speed potion here. That's really good. As you might imagine, that's pretty damn good because now I get to keep my buffer. Let's see exactly what we can get done. Still completely save myself from damage. And then just pretty easily throw out lethal the turn after. Lovely. Strawberry upon pickup, raise your max HP by 7, as well as a bunch of stuff I don't want. It's really important that I just smith those wild strikes, I guess. If the Thunderclaps improved to give an extra turn of vulnerability, rather than just 3 more damage they would be upgrade targets, but as it stands, they're literally just a way to gain vulnerability. Um, this is unfortunate. Really garbage jumping hand. There's nothing I'm going to want to do with this. Here I take 16. Ouchie. strike here to yeah, look for Thunderclap so that I can only use a single wild strike to get kill. Lovely. Enemy's not even attacking this turn, but I probably still have to second wind. That flame barrier is also not looking particularly good in this deck anymore. Like another target I might want to remove. Vulnerability, frailty, and weakness. We're basically forever here. Not even gonna bother going defensive. And in fact, I couldn't if I tried. A second second win seems like it might be a important pick at this point in time. We need more ways of managing all of the wounds that we have.
It's fine. We can keep just going for damage there. So now it's probably just focused on the back line, right? Mm -hmm. Should just draw those nine and fiend fire the back line for lethal. Unless we get pretty unlucky here. Thankfully, we did not. Nice. Yeah, so it's only the boss fights that really get close. Like burn to the discard pile. What that does give us AOE, and it kind of works in the deck. We do still need AOE, especially next floor. Unfortunately, evolve only draws us to statuses rather than statuses and curses. And Immolate no longer burns curses in your deck. That was a very, very old format of Immolate. Um, so Calling Bell's a little bit of a problem. Uh, Ruining Pyramid is nice, I guess. Just to hold the cards in the hand until the right time. Problem is, that means that I have to use Second Wind or Fiendfire if I want to clear my hand. And if I can't draw into either of those, then congratulations, I now have a handful of wounds and there's nothing I can do. I suspect that's probably not the pickup for us either. Uh, trashing the deck with curses is obviously really garbage here. Despite the fact that at the very least the second win would be able to burn them, so would uh, guess fiend fire. Eh, you know what? I'll take the risk. Fine. Not that good between me and my uh, my evolve. Pains in the wing. You can no longer become weakened. Eh, dream catch when you rest your magic cards your deck. Eh, gremlin. Horn, whenever an enemy dies, gain an energy and draw a card. That one's pretty good, though. At the very least, there was a good one. So I would like to go for as much card removal as I can get. So I only shop over on this side. Frontliner is the only one that's going to be defending for the next turn, so... And it's also buffing itself, so it's another thing to be aware of. Let's kill that one manually. Hey! Ooh, Immolate's a good draw. Really wish everyone was still vulnerable for this one, though. And then a single immolate for the kill. Unfortunately, I did have to lose a little bit of HP there. Pain is also really annoying because it will oftentimes remove the buffer that I gain from the fossilized helix. That's a pretty big problem there. Ooh, card removal. Relic. Blue candle. Duvu doll. Prey wheel. Normally, enemies drop an addition card reward. A bit late for that. Well, at least here's a normal enemy. Promising possibly to drop a card reward for us. I'd like to play the second win there, but really it is all about damage. The name the game in so many fashions here. New. Uh -uh. Be happy to turn all of those down. Basically, just second wind at this point, please. All right. More than happy to go for that early kill. Reduce the field down to just the one target I have to deal with. We even managed to get two of the curses out of there. Unfortunately, Evolve still isn't played. So this turn is garbage. Let's get below half HP, hopefully. Not in this fight, but eventually. Ooh, Havoc. It's garbage. It's garbage. It's fine. Right, fine. The more negate the next to curses you. Um, Master of Strategy. Draw three cards. That's really good. It'll get me down to my my evolve a lot more quickly. 
really important to take that. Also, let's take that feel no pain because that seems ridiculous. Seems like a thing I should have taken earlier. Uh, frankly, it seems such like a thing that is ridiculous and that I should have taken earlier that I will upgrade it. There's also a dazed strike in the game. I can't remember its name for the life of me at the moment, but that's another card that I do want to include. Alright, let's pop that energy potion. I don't want to end up at the end of a fight with all my potions left over. At least if I can avoid it. Hey! I'm not sure I can draw into lethal here, but we can draw into a fair shot at these enemies. It'll have to be good enough. So, one more for you, and yeah, now I have to deal with two at the same time. At the very least, we'll probably have Immolate up in time to do most of the dealing here. Yeah. It'd look a lot like this. Beautiful. No. Well, Barricade is actually funny here. If I g ever get Barricade out, I will be defended forever. Again, I will dodge an elite and upgrade that barricade. Mummified hand, when you play a power card, random card in your hand costs zero for the rest of the turn. That's really important with evolve, barricade, feel no pain. Okay, we're we're absolutely off to the races right now. We can get two more upgrades if we veer off to the left here, and I'm more than happy to. Draw one card hit. One card hit. The draw is real! Ooh, what a full hand. Well, at least we're gonna be below half HP. Guarantee you that much, so the meat of the bone is back on the table. Really hoping I would have had uh, Immolate earlier. Mm -hmm. See if this draws us into an entirely new deck. It does not. All right, so fine. Just wait until we get all offered lethal here. Okay, it's pretty ridiculous. I drew all of these wounds. There's only one wound left in the deck, but three useful cards. A little bit saddened. Hopefully I get one of the useful cards here. Yeah, or one of the wounds, which will then draw me the useful cards. I haven't burned out many of these wounds at all. Beautiful. That is the big problem this deck has, right? Not being able to burn out the wounds fast enough. Pocket Watch, whenever you play three or less cards during a turn, draw three cards at the start of your next turn's will produce. We'll immediately use that. Let's get the second win upgraded. Ooh, barricade is a good pickup. Enemy is about to put a parasite in my deck. How do I feel about that? Pretty strongly negative. Yeah. Ouch, but also feels essential. Oh, that's fine. Leave that one there. So I do uh, become vulnerable here, but I don't become weakened at the very least. And then I will evolve, feel no pain, thunderclap, and giant pink fire. I burnt out a lot of my wild strikes as well, by the way. But it gives me enough defense that anything except for the enemy generating a parasite here is fine. It'd be nice to take two more damage here if I could, but I guess I could take two more damage to Pain. No, we've already bought that Pain out of the deck. Mm 
Hey, go, go for your largest attack possible. Oh, was that it? Oh. Oh, no. Fear potion, great pickup. None of that is at the moment, though. Literally, I think the, the way that we lose here is not having... Not having Evolve, nor Barricade, nor Fiend Fire out. Fiend Fire, sorry. Uh, feel no pain out early enough, so. I suspect that upgrading the Master of Strategy might be the right strategy here. I'm going to rest instead, though. Spot weakness. It's pre upgraded. Doesn't necessarily fit into the archetype of the deck, but it's fine. All right, I'll play one. Shame I didn't have a barricade there, yeah, especially because of this turn. Yikes. Very glad, very glad what I did uh, in the last last rest space, despite the fact that the Fossilized Helix was going to save me here, it's possible the Fossilized Helix wasn't going to save me in that fight, right? And the way it couldn't have saved me in that fight is if I had a pain really early and it was with another card that I needed to play. So I like the safety of how that went down. So, and shouldn't be too difficult to push for lethal here. Alright. Heavy Blade. Don't have that much strength in the deck. We have a little bit, but not that much. Don't have that either. Alright. Let's go for the final smith here. Get the Master of Strategy. I mean, look, we're only 8 HP off of the maximum. I can get myself seven block here. That doesn't even save me against the Awakened One, though. Oh, that's so sad. I'll play the second wind, but not the extra card, because now Pocket Watch draws extra cards this turn for me. It's very, very important. Let's Thunderclap Immolate. Looking to try and remove these frontliners as quickly as possible. And now that we have the barricade and feel no pain out, yeah, we're good. Whew. We got here in the end. Gosh, it was almost the very end as well. Yikes. Wouldn't have taken that many more turns until we were just completely torn apart there. Uh, it's also worth noting we do have another boss after this, so it's not like the fights are over yet. Time to get that pain out of the deck, though. Donu and Decker are obviously the best boss for us after this. Hopefully we get them. It's the enemy's weakness. Thanks. Second Wind had to be the absolute bottom card in my deck, apparently, so... Really? Oh, we, I guess we don't have that many wounds in the deck at this point in time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for a little bit of block, I guess. For a couple of hands for our next second wind. Game? Do you want to explain what's going on here? I'm not even going to play the final strike. I need the pocket watch to go off here. This is awful. Well, we finally have a good second wind. Oh. 
All it took was almost the entire video game. It's not like Donovan Decker is going to be a cakewalk either, so I suspect uh, my previous assertion about how this might work out. The one wherein I said, oh, yeah, we might just get completely stopped by something at one point. It's not like we're going to die by attrition. It's just going to be something that completely dead drops us. Well, we found it. We found what that thing was. Thank you for the after fight heal and don't know what that goes. Good. Feel no pain. If I get a uh, barricade out this turn, we've got a good chance. Or a better chance, wrong. I'm going to Wild Strike Fiend Fire, just get it out of the deck. Get the pain out of the deck, especially, I mean. Also defends me this time. Evolve Barricade? Pretty great for us. Now we just need more, more defense from somewhere. I don't know where that defense is going to come from. Those wounds draw us fast enough. Come on. Oh, God. It's not going to be enough. Yeah. Not being able to find an extra copy of Second Wind killed the deck. And exactly as I said, if we couldn't get the evolves and stuff out early enough, we were just going to die. Uh, as the deck got thicker, it was a problem. Like, obviously, including these curses was a problem. Um, it's, it's not like we benefited that much from the curses we ended up including either. Right? Gremlin Horn was kind of handy, um, especially in the Reptomancer fight. It's possible we would have lost the Reptomancer fight without the Gremlin Horn. Uh, it's just we didn't get really good selections for boss relics after the second boss, and we didn't find another copy of Evolve. Despite the fact I wouldn't have wanted to draw four cards every time I drew a status, what I would want from Evolve uh, is just to have a second copy of it so that I'm more reliable in drawing it early. Right, Especially having it into my early hand means that every turn after that, most turns after at the very least, are quite reliable for their card draw. Um, not being able to remove the pain because I wanted to buy the Master of Strategy was also another concern of ours. Um, we could have saved a lot of HP by being able to hold on to the buffer for a little bit longer. The Pocket Watch is the only reason that we even made it to that second fight there. Spot Weakness didn't necessarily need to be in that deck. I could have added it or not added it. I don't think it necessarily made an impact. Immolate did need to be there. Pommel Strike did need to be there for the interim it was. Um, better sources of vulnerability for the enemies was also going to be a good idea. Um, Shockwave was something we were offered early, but it's also a little expensive, especially in a deck that can't defend at the same time as playing Shockwave. Uh, I would have played Shockwave and then wanted to attack, so Shockwave is really expensive for that. Well, looks like I don't have to change the modifiers. For the moment, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slate the Spire. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you next time.